your life will be shaping by these things, either for good or for negative. Who you have encountered with, who you associate with, where you stay, what you see, and what you hear is for things. And determine where you're going to be in the next five years. Selfish minded. Selfish minded people are people that don't look at the holistic vision. They don't look at the holistic vision. They don't look at the bigger vision. They are after their own vision. Now, they don't know that in trying to fulfill you, the bigger vision, hello, you know, they also will be fulfilling their vision. But a man that is selfish minded will not look at the holistic vision. Is after his own vision. Can I talk to someone today? So anytime we encourage you as a child of God, you look at the bigger vision. Wherever you are working, look at the bigger vision. Not just on yourself, but look at the bigger vision. How can I see that we move this forward? I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Israelites were always looking for their own. They were in what we call survivor mode. Okay? Every man to himself, you know. Uh, when a person is in trouble, nobody thinks of helping the other person. Everybody, hey, leave yourself, leave everybody, leave everybody, leave everybody, leave everybody, leave everybody. So that was their kind of mindset in the church. And as I'm saying this, we still have such people there. If you have this kind of mindset, it means that you are trapped. You have been liberated. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness. But yet you are still trapped in your mind. And God is saying, get rid of this thing. Number one, get rid of the mindset of a slave. Don't have the slave mentality. Number two, don't have scarcity mentality. I'm bringing you to a place of abundance. I cannot bring you to a place of abundance and yet you have scarcity mentality. You cannot, you cannot handle what I'm about to give you with that mindset. Number two, don't watch don't be simple minded because I'm going, to, I'm going to give you complex issues. There are going to be problems that will come your way that is only when you are able to solve those problems that you can get your breakthrough. If you cannot solve the problem, you can't get your breakthrough. So therefore, I must confront you with complex situations. So be, don't be simple minded. And then they also say about small minded. I'm going to give you a big vision. I'm going to bless you beyond your capacity, beyond what you can think of. So therefore, increase your capacity increase the tent okay increase the the, 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 the the place of the tent so that you can place the tent on where i have what i've given you praise the lord and then finally it's also saying that don't be a selfish person think about it you might be in the choir now don't be thinking about only your own how one shall one shall think about the full team how can it move you are in the ocean department think about how can we move the ocean department together you are talented your gift is there to help to move the department up. See, God met Moses face to face. And God said to Moses, he said, Moses, see, he said, I have given you a vision to build a tabernacle. He said, but I give you the vision. There are people that are skilled. They don't have the vision. You share the vision to them. They are skilled in this heart. They are the one that will carry the vision. Now, the question I ask is that, now, Moses met God face to face. Why didn't God just say, man, say, Moses, I've given you the anointing. Go. Go and build it yourself. That's the place of man. Now, if I find myself in a situation, what do I need to do? The Bible says that there were two people that had a different spirit. And that were Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. And the Bible begins to tell us what they did to have a different spirit. Let's look at Joshua chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. Joshua 14, 7 to 9. Quickly, can you move on? 7 to 9. 40 years was I when, Mos when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. As it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people met. But I wholly follow the Lord my, my God. I wholly follow the Lord my God. So the secret to this is to follow the Lord your God. If I'm to follow the Lord my God, then I must know his will. 
And if I was to know his will, his will is embedded in his word. Hello? His will is embedded in his word. He said, I follow what was in my heart. It means I follow what was in my mind. And I follow God wholeheartedly. It means to say that he had a different spirit because when he saw what God was doing, when he saw the miracles in the wilderness, he saw what God did, divide the Red Sea. He saw how God fed the people, you know, in the wilderness. He saw the miracles and everything. He came to conclusion, I must follow this God wholeheartedly. Anything he says, I must follow. So any the word they said, he decided to accept that word than to accept the word of the fathers. He has said, refused to accept the tradition of his fathers. Praise him. So we must learn, no matter what was passed to us, we must learn to accept the word of God. What is the word of God saying concerning you? If you are depressed today, it's because you are faced with challenge, you are faced with what they told you in the time past. And because that you look around, there's no hope for you. But the word of God is saying different things concerning you. Which one are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what you are feeling now? Or what they said? You are feeling what you are feeling now because you accepted what they said concerning you. And so to change your feelings, you must accept what God said concerning you. So what God is saying concerning you? Some people look at themselves as they are not worthy. They are, they are worthless. But that's not what God is saying concerning you. That you are wonderfully and fearfully made. So lift up your hands to the God. I say, Father, help me, Lord. Whatever that's happened in the time past that is affecting my future, I delete it now. I delete it now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let go of past bitterness. Let go of past betrayal. Let go of past disappointment. Talk to God. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And lay hold to the future that God has for you. A better future. A great future that's ahead of you. Lay hold on it. In Jesus' name we pray. I join my faith with your faith and I agree with you. In the name, starting from now. The plan that God has for you will come to pass in Jesus' name. Every agenda of the enemy to rob you of the blessing that God has. In the name of Jesus, we be met with frustration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Starting from now, may the Lord enlarge your capacity. As you hear the word of God, every wrong idea that has deprived you of where you ought to be. Some of you ought to be in a greater height, but because of the idea you bought, somebody gave you the idea. And because of you bought that idea, because if you are going to commit sin, somebody will sell the idea to you, either the devil or somebody sell it to you, and then you accept it. Some things you did. But today, in the name of Jesus, that idea will delete it from it from you, from your mind in the name of Jesus. We command the software in, in, in or the hard disks, in, the, the hard, whatever it is, software in, 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 in your system. We command it now to be deleted in the name of Jesus. We ask God to place a new software in the name of Jesus that you are totally transformed. A changed person to be able to assess the blessing you have in the name of Jesus. Jacob in his state could not assess the blessing that was waiting for him. It was only Israel that could assess it. And so that is why they had to wrestle with Jacob to bring forth the Israel. It was Israel that was able to assess the dream, the vision God has. I pray for you today, if there need to be a spiritual resting in your life, to wrestle some things out, to wrestle out your Israel from your life, so that you can fulfill the vision God has for you. Today, may the resting take place now. May it take place now. May your Israel manifest in the name of Jesus. I decree this week, as you go, the Lord will go with you. This will be one of the best weeks in your life. No evil will come near you. Whatever you lay your hands will prosper. It shall be testimony all the way. So shall it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the church of God will say loud, Amen.